Hey guys, it's Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor. This is night number three of the Triple Fall Pumpkins painting. So each night this week, we have changed up this design three different ways. Night number one was whimsical. We kept it super simple. We just added a couple of patterns and some simple details and lines. So if you're a beginner painter and you want to start with a really easy project, beginner, uh, this whimsical design is really, really easy. Uh, night number two, which was last night, we took it up a notch and did it really rustic. We did lots of distressing with like a dry brush. We even added cow print to one of the little pumpkins. And then we did an antiquing glaze over the entire thing to kind of give it more of an antique look. And then for those of you on TikTok who can't see what I'm talking about, sorry, these are hanging up behind me. This is the rustic one. And we did the antiquing glaze on it. The replays for these tutorials are on my YouTube channel and on Facebook if you want to rewatch them there. This is the whimsical one for those of y'all who can't see what's hanging up behind me. Hey, Linda, thank you for sprinkling the love, Jerry. Hi, Betty. Hello, Tracy. And tonight we're going to change it up even more. We're going to go a little bit more glitz, a little more glam. I've got some foil that we're going to use. I've got some all kinds of goodies laid over here because I couldn't quite decide exactly how I wanted to go glam. I've got some puff paint with glitter. I've got um, some metallic paint um, in kind of like a champagne gold color. I even have some turquoise glitter paint. I have some enchanted top coat acrylic that we might try. I'm not quite sure. Uh, and then I have dazzling metallics in peacock pearl, which I thought would go great on our turquoise pumpkin. And then I also, I forgot I had these. These are called stickles. They normally sell these to like scrapbookers and card makers. And these would go perfect with our bluegrass green pumpkin. So we might even just spread some of these on to add a little sparkle to our pumpkin. I don't know yet. I'm just going to set all these to the side. I got out some options so we can play and kind of create. And I might just get y'all's opinion on what I should do next. If you have not downloaded the tutorial to this project yet, or not, sorry. If you haven't downloaded the template to this project yet, you can download it in the video description. I've dropped it right up there for y'all. Um, and there's different ways you can paint this. You can print the template at home and trace it on a canvas, on a wooden round, on a piece of wood and cut it out with some jig a jigsaw or a scroll saw. You could even trace it on just a little wood block and set it in a tiered tray if you wanted a really small project. If you want to paint well, like what I'm painting, this is a laser cut wood blank. This is the 18 inch size. It has the lines lasered in it. So you don't even have to figure out how to do the lettering. You don't have to trace anything. You literally just sit down open this video and start painting along. So if you want to grab one of these, they are available at shopdoorhangers.com. Just use the search bar and type in triple fall pumpkin. It'll come right up. Um, and then let's see, what else was I going to say? I think that was it on this project. Um, and then tomorrow night at 7 PM, I'm going to be live with a few of my friends. One of them is on here right now. Hey, Miss Christy. Christy's going to be live with us. So is Marie Mosley and uh, Sandy McWhorter. I bet they'll pop in at some point later tonight also. And we're going to be live and we're going to be chatting and painting around the table together and answering all of your questions. So if you have questions about craft fairs, painting door hangers, selling door hangers, about the Painters Clubhouse, about life in general, we'll do our best to answer all the questions. Hey, Brenda. Hi, Pamela. Hello, Laura. TikTok, I'm going to apologize in advance. It is really hard for me to see comments on TikTok because they are white and my tabletop is white. So if you see me holding up my hand like this, it's because I'm trying to read the comments. But um, if you want to hop over to Facebook or YouTube to watch this, you're going to have a bird's eye overhead camera view, which is a little better than TikTok or YouTube. And so um, if you want, you can come join us over here. You can also see all the comments going on over here. Hey, Lisa. Hi, Mary. Hello, Ray and Stacy. All right, I'm going to switch to our dual camera here so you can see my face and my overhead project. And we're going to get started. And just like the last two nights, we're going to base coat everything with our background colors first. We're sticking with the same color palette because I think it's really interesting looking at these two door hangers hanging up behind me to see that they are the same door hanger design, pretty much the same colors, just with a different style put on them. And so I, I want to do that tonight, but like I said, we're going to take it glam. So I think it would be really cool to kind of see all three of them side by side with the same color patterns. Um, and then the different styles put over the top of that. So let's start by painting our um, turquoise, or no, actually, let's start by painting this little pumpkin because we're going to do foil on it. And the only foil I could find that I thought might look good on this project 
was leopard print foil. And it does have just a hint of a gold like shimmer to the background of it. So it totally fits in with our bling theme. It goes really well with the other colors that we're gonna be using. So we're gonna do that on this smallest pumpkin here. If you've never used foil before, you are in for a treat tonight. It is the coolest project or craft product to use on a door hanger. Okay, so we will have to paint a background color for our foil, I think. I've used this on here before. I'm trying to decide. I have used it on just MDF before, and I think this shows up pretty, pretty well, but I want to really highlight that gold background behind the leopard print. So to make it even more gold, I might do a base coat of a gold on this pumpkin so that when we go to put the foil on, just in case that foil doesn't get perfect coverage, if, you know, if anything's going to peek through, it's not going to be this boring wood color. It'll be a gold color. Um, and this champagne, is that what it's called? Yeah, champagne gold. Ooh, this needs shaking up. Is a matte metallic paint from Deco Art. And it is almost the exact color of the gold that's behind this leopard print. Laura is excited about to learn about the foil technique. How many of you guys are coming to Southern Adornments Live in Destin, Florida at the end of next month? we are gonna be doing a foil project there as well. So if you've never foiled before, you're gonna to get to give it a shot at Southern Dormants Live. We also have a glass and resin project. So if that's been something you've been wanting to try your hand at, you're in for a treat at Southern Dormants Live. Yeah, I'm live over on um, YouTube and Facebook. So if you wanna see a better painting angle, come join me over there. Yeah, Murray State Racers, whoop whoop. <laughs> that's my alma mater. Are you guys racers fans? <laughs> it's funny when we go out of town and people ask where we're from, we'll say Murray, Kentucky. And they're like, uh, that sounds kind of familiar, but I don't think I've ever heard of it. <laughs> and then when we say Murray state racers, like Murray state university basketball, they're like, Oh, I got you. <laughs> uh, let's see. Dina says me. Does that mean you're coming to join me in Southern at uh, Southern dormants live in Destin? Uh, Diane said, can't come, but got the shirt. I'm so glad you got the shirt and you're going to celebrate from home. Laura's attending virtually. If you're not able to come join us in person at Destin, we do have virtual tickets available and you can purchase those at southernadornmentslive.com. Um, we do even have a few virtual kits left. My mother and I have actually been packing those the last couple of days. And so we've got them all packed up and ready to ship out. We'll be sending them out. Um, about a week before the live event. So if you are getting one of our virtual kits, don't spill the beans. Don't post pictures yet of what's inside of it because we want to keep the contents a secret from our live event attendees so that they are um, like surprised at the event with the crafts that we're doing. It's so fun to surprise everybody. And so don't give away what's in those virtual kits to our in-person attendees. That way the surprise is not spoiled. This is so pretty. Look at this color. And it covers really well. Look at this. I mean, we are going over like this tan color of the wood, which um, is not too dissimilar from the champagne. So that probably helps a little bit. But I'm just giving this pumpkin a good base coat, trying to smooth all that out now that I've got good coverage. And now we can rinse that brush. And while that dries, we'll work on another pumpkin. And once it's completely dry, we'll come back and put our foil adhesive on it. That's why I'm painting this one first, um, because the foil adhesive takes some time to dry. So we kind of got kind of got to work in layers here. OK, questions. Jessica says, where can I purchase the shirt? Um, it is posted in the Southern Adornments Live Facebook group, Jessica. Um, it's also available over on the Cotton Chaos website. So CottonChaos.com, you can find it over there. Um, they're the ones shipping the shirts. Marie says, can't make it this year, but I'll be there in the heart. I'm so excited for your new um, space, Marie, that you're working on, that you've expanded to. Marie's one of the ones that I said is going to be here tomorrow night, joining me live on Facebook. Samantha said, I wanted to try to foil, but I need no more craft stuff. Yeah, need this craft stuff, Samantha. I beg to differ. <laughs> Teresa said, would you use antique gold if you don't have that color? Yes, I think antique gold would be a nice substitute. This one is called champagne gold. It's like a really soft sheen of a gold. And this is going to be our background behind the foil adhesive. Um, I'm sorry about the foil adhesive, the leopard print foil. So that's why we painted that that color. 
Um, we might also use this color to do some polka dots or something. So in the back of your mind, I want you to be thinking how we can glam up the sign part. I kind of thought maybe we could base coat it with our creamy white and then do like polka dots or something in this color. So if y'all like that idea, let me know. The foil is from Artistic Painting Studio. And you know what? I didn't even grab a link for that. So let me go do that real quick because somebody's going to be wanting it. Also, tomorrow morning on uh, Facebook Live at 9.30 a.m., I do something called Friday Fab Five. And so um, some of the things that I'm using on these tutorials this week, I will probably include links to those um, in my Friday Fab Five. So if you're wanting to know like what glaze I used the other night, things like that, um, you can grab those in Friday Fab Five tomorrow. But I just dropped the link for the foils in the comments for you. <laughs> okay. Um, Let's do orange, canyon orange. And I've just been, since I've been using the same colors every night, it's kind of convenient because, whoops, that needs shaking. It's a brand new bottle. Uh, my little um, ice cube tray here already has all these colors kind of in it already. And so I've just kind of been adding to them if I need a little bit more in the same little spots. So use a large flat tip brush for this. That way you can cover it quickly and get um, a nice even coat. See how I'm doing really long strokes back and forth. If you have lots of brush strokes, it's probably because either you're using too small of a brush or because you're making too many. <laughs> uh, that was my mother-in-law. She may try to call back. Sometimes when, when I'm on Facebook Live, um, and I deny the call. It sends like a weird noise, like she dialed the wrong number. And so she'll call back. So there's a good chance she'll try again. You love your trays? Oh, Rita, I do too. This is a silicone ice cube tray. I've been using it for a little while now. Before this, I was exclusively using um, egg cartons, like foam egg cartons. And I still have tons of those. So every now and then, if I need um, some colors, and, I, and uh, you know, I've got this tray full of other colors and I need to use some different colors. I will switch to the ice, to the egg cartons just for convenience. But this worked out really well this week because we're using the same colors every night. Okay, so get that covered. We'll do, we might have to do another coat on this in a moment. I'm going to like smooth this all out and then we'll see. Hey, Georgie, glad you caught me live. Hey, Tammy. Your dad husband tries to throw the egg cartons away. Say, no, those are gold. We need those. <laughs> I have people at church who save them for me. Oh, Dixie is in Artistic Painting Studios Foil of the Month Club. That's awesome. Oh, I already have a, I almost squirted it in a different hole. Look, I am nearly out of this light buttermilk color. We've used a lot of it this week, so I may have to like sit here and shake it down. <laughs> There's a little bit still in there. It's time to buy more. Surely we've got enough to get through tonight. <laughs> I'm like, do I have more somewhere on a shelf? I don't think so. I think this will be enough to get through the live. We'll set this upside down so it can sit and drain in case we need a few more drops. Okay, this is going to be the background of our sign up here. Last night, we did it like creamy colored shiplap, and then we did some like distressing and stuff on it. Tonight, we're going to keep it creamy. We're not going to distress on it, um, but we might add some champagne colored polka dots with this gold color to kind of keep it a little bit more on the glam side, less on the rustic side. Shelly said, I received my Southern Adornments Live t-shirt in the mail today. Yay. So glad you like it. Where do you get the larger bottles of paint? Um, I have seen some of them in the stores, but most of them I get from the DecoArt website. If you're a Painters Clubhouse member, be sure and go in there and grab your discount code and you can save 30% shopping on their website using our Clubhouse exclusive discount. I think you can use it up to two times a month. Super nice to be able to get things discounted. 
Plus, we have a 20% off discount that you can use at shopdoorhangers.com if you need to shop for door hangers or brushes or templates or anything like that. That little paint holder behind me is on there as well. You can get 20% off of it. It holds 81 bottles of paint. So if you need a storage solution for your paints, it is great. They are made by the guys back in our shop. Uh, Walmart has them, but they are not deco art. Okay. Could you do the Pika de Boo foil on the letters for the sign? Hmm. I don't know how that would look with our leopard print foils. The only thing. Okay. Our pumpkin's going to be bluegrass green. That is the turquoise kind of color we've been working with all week. I feel like I need to raise this up just a hair to give you guys more of a view of all of it. It looks like it had slid down at some point or something. I don't know. Alrighty. Um, large, large brush here. Let's see. Hey, PC sister. I think it's Angie. I can't hardly read that. She said, Painters Clubhouse has changed my life for the better. Thank you for that. You are so sweet. Thank you for the comments on my bandana. This one is from Wander and Arrow Co. Um, it's a, they got an Instagram. Wander, like I wander, you know, through Hobby Lobby. <laughs> and Arrow, like bow and arrow. Wander and Arrow. Um, okay, what were we, I get, I get so easily distracted. I was like, what am I doing? Hey, Jennifer. We're going to coat this pumpkin with the bluegrass green. We might come back and do like an enchanted shimmer uh, gloss on it. And then we might do some like glitter, chunky glitter on it too. I don't know yet. Have any of you guys used the enchanted, the enchanted um, top coat? I've got a couple different ones. I have a blue one and a green one. And I got the blue one out, but I'm kind of wondering if I should have gotten the green one out. They're pretty similar either way. And with this being kind of a blue green color, either one would probably work well. So for those of you who are just logging on, you can get this template for free. If you click on the link up in our video description and you can paint this three different ways. The other two are hanging up behind me. One of them is whimsical. One's rustic. Tonight we're doing glam. And we're talking about our membership, the Painters Clubhouse. It's been around since 2018. We have several women in there. Um, I think we're around 1,400 strong now. These ladies are a wonderful community. They're so supportive. If you are wanting to be a part of a group, to have a place to post your pictures, and to get feedback on your craft projects and your door hangers, we would love to have you come and join us. Um, we have a members area, which I gave a tour of this morning at, at 10 a.m. I went live, and I shared a behind-the-scenes look at what all is in that members area. So if you're on the fence at all, you might ought to go watch that live and just see what Sorry, I just realized y'all couldn't hear a word I was saying a moment ago because I closed that out and that's what I'm using for my microphone. I was just saying that, yeah, our Hobby Lobby doesn't have the big bottles in all the colors either. Um, they mainly just have like your primary colors, like primary red, festive green, Bahama blue, um, black, white, you know, it's hard to find all of them. Um, would regular glitter work on one of the pumpkins or will it mess it up? Yeah. Regular gr glitter. Blah, blah, that's really hard to say. That should work totally fine. Should be fine. Okay. 
Um, I didn't cover that area very well. There's a little spot right here where I totally missed it with the paint. Touch that up. Okay, we're gonna let all that dry while we paint our stems. And I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush for the stems. Get a little water on your brush and then I like to kind of wipe the excess water off, but I like to start with a damp brush because it, um, Oops, my paint's dried up. And I'm going to use the Sable Brown. It's a little bit of a softer brown. Um, I like to get my brush a little bit wet because it keeps the paint from getting like fused up in the, the bristles of the brush. I feel like it slips off the brush a little easier when the brush is wet. I could be totally imagining it, but that's the way I feel. Okay, this is the sable brown color. It's a really soft brown. If you don't have this color, but you do have like the dark chocolate, you could take this color and mix it with a little bit of the creamy white here, the buttermilk, light buttermilk, and it, you could make this color. What was I saying earlier before my phone started ringing? Oh, we were talking about Painter's Clubhouse. Yeah, so the members area has over 100 different tutorials in it. Each tutorial has a template you can download. And so you could trace those on canvas. You could take trace them on a round. You could trace them on a piece of wood. Um, if you're wanting to start cutting your own wood pieces, we even have a tutorial that shows you how to cut it out with a jigsaw or a scroll saw. Um, so even if you're a beginner, you've never painted before, we've got resources that will walk you through every step of the way to help you on, you know, your painting journey to help you figure out where to go from here. Where did you say you got the paint holder? Crystal, we sell these in our shop at shopdoorhangers.com and they hold 81 of the two ounce size bottles of paint. And it can sit on a table too. I just prefer to have mine hung on the wall kind of, you know, for decoration behind me, but it can, it's wide enough and sturdy enough, especially once you get all the paint in there that you could like set it on the back side of your table and it would stand up just fine holding all the paint. Yeah, when you go to shopdoorhangers.com, use the search bar and type in storage cube and it'll come right up. <laughs> Lisa said, Tamara in the Painters Clubhouse teaches you all the things. I appreciate that. You like these colors? Thank you. Um, come and join us over on Facebook or YouTube if you want to see a better like overhead angle. Plus, you can kind of see the ones hanging up behind me a little better that I painted last night and the night before. So there's three tutorials on YouTube and Facebook showing you different ways to paint this. Um, and tonight we're going with glam. So we've got a champagne gold pumpkin. Oh, that's already nearly dry. So let's finish drying this. It feels like it's almost dry. It's just slightly tacky. Um, and then when this is completely dry, we can go ahead and put our foil adhesive on here because this foil adhesive is sold by Artistic Painting Studio. And it is supposed to dry before you put anything on it. So normally when you use glue, you put the glue on, then you slap whatever it is on there so that it can go ahead and like set up. But this dries tacky. You know how a sticky note is repositional and tacky? That's kind of what this is, but it's even stickier than a sticky note. So it makes a really sticky, tacky residue when it dries. And that's what you put your foil on. You also need to make sure the paint like around the area you're going to foil is nice and dry. So I'm going to kind of get that started and then get my brush out and we're going to start putting the foil adhesive on. And I'm just going to use a little paint brush for this. They sell this on the site. So if you go on the um, AP, APS Artistic Painting Studio website to buy foils, I dropped the foil link again. Also, I have foils linked on my TikTok profile. If you go on there to pick out foils, make sure to get a little pot of this glue. And y'all, I've, I've used this pot forever, and I'm still only halfway halfway on it. And it, um, you can water it down a little bit. Like mine is getting real sticky. It's been in, I've had this little pot for like two or three years. So sometimes I'll add a little bit of water to it to kind of like soften it up a little. Get it, get it more workable because I want it nice and thin so that when I start to... Um, Hold on. I'm making a big mess on this brush. Let me drop that in the water. And I'm going to use the bottom of my paintbrush. I'm going to add some more water and stir it. Um, what was I saying? Oh, I like it a little more thin than, than what it was. See how like thick it is? I want it a little thinner than that so that it spreads easily on my door hanger and dries a little quicker. You know what? That's not going to spray quick enough, so I'm just going to pour some in. 
and I'm using this water as opposed to my paint water because my paint water is dirty. I don't want to turn the foil colors. So thinning it out just a little bit. Is it a monthly fee? Yes, the Painters Clubhouse is a monthly fee. It's $47 a month. Um, so like I was saying, you get access to the member library. There's over 100 different tutorials and templates for all kinds of seasons in there. And then you also get new ones every month. So while I'm stirring this, let me actually put this up on the screen. And y'all can see what we're going to be doing this month. So in September, we're going to be doing, sorry, TikTok, y'all can't see this, but I'll describe what it is. Number one is called the Boo Babe. It's a cute little ghost. She's a female. She's got some smoochy lips. She's wearing a purple bandana on her head and holding a banner that says Boo in its three different triangles with the letters on it. Um, the second project is going to be a napkin Mod Podge project with Tracy Pounds. She's our guest instructor. And she's going to be doing a fall napkin on one side and a pumpkin napkin on the other. And then the third project is a haunted house snow globe door hanger. So that one is definitely for our people who like spooky Halloween and a more challenging uh, project. The boo babe is more like cutesy Halloween and for beginners. So if you want to paint any of these projects with us, definitely join the clubhouse because those start in September. Uh, Amber says, I can't wait to do that haunted mansion globe. Y'all, I did when I come up with this one, I didn't even realize that the haunted mansion movie was coming back out with a new one. I'm like, didn't that movie just come out a few years ago and they're already redoing it? Did they run out of movie ideas? <laughs> um, Okay, um, I was reading comments to see if I missed any questions. I am just putting this foil adhesive on really thin. You want it thin, but you also want a really good coverage. And so I'm kind of just spreading it along. Long brush strokes, smoothing it out. You want to give this plenty of time to dry. So if you are at all worried that your foil adhesive isn't dry yet, you might even let it set overnight. Um, and you could come back in the morning and put your foil on it the next day. I usually just give it a good 20 or 30 minutes <laughs> because I'm impatient and I paint fast. So, um, you know, it's not, uh, it's not ideal. You definitely want to give it plenty of time to dry. So if you're at all in doubt that it's dry or not, you might want to give it some more time. And it's also super thick. Even though I thinned it out with a little bit of water, I feel like I'm still struggling just a bit to get it smoothed out. So just kind of be patient with it. Keep working it. Keep smoothing it out. Let me put this up. I think I've got plenty of glue on there. I just need to spread it a little better. So I'm actually going to spritz it to keep it workable because it is starting to dry already. Smooth, smooth, smooth it out. I'm trying to even it out. Spread it around and then we're going to let it dry. So you definitely just want to make sure you've covered every area you want to foil. Don't get it anywhere that you don't want the foil adhesive to stick. You know, if you, because the wherever you stick it down, that leopard print's going to stick and you may not want it there. And you can paint on top of this foil. I've had people ask me that before. So once you paint, once you do the foil, you could add lettering on top of it. You could go back and paint it, whatever you want to do. Okay, see how it looks kind of milky looking? While it's milky, it's definitely not dry. So when that milkiness is completely gone, we'll check, we'll test it again. Um, while we're waiting for that, this needs another coat. So let's jump up there and do that, and I'll answer some questions. Hollywood's definitely out of original material. Yes. Okay, Samantha said, I think that movie came out when I was a child. How old are you, Samantha? I thought that movie just came out like, I don't know. Wasn't it like 2005? Were you a kid then? Because that makes me feel old. <laughs> oh, Jennifer, uh, it is just, I don't know. It's just called Foil Adhesive, and it's sold by Artistic Painting Studio. So I put the link to the foils out in, in the comments somewhere. Oh, Samantha, you are a baby. You turn 28 tomorrow. I'm, I'm 39. <laughs> Some of our ladies on here are like, oh, you're both babies. <laughs> oh. Okay, putting a second coat of our antique white on here. And I'm already running out of paint. So we're just going to do this. Get as much of that leftover paint out of there as I can. 
get a little water because we got to get it to go a long way. But second coats are usually pretty easy because they don't take as much as much paint to get good coverage. That little spray bottle has become my best friend lately. I don't know if y'all noticed, but I've figured out a use for it every time I've painted lately to kind of keep the paint workable, to water something down, to do some shading. If y'all don't have one, you need to get one. I got mine at the Hobby Lobby on the um, rubber stamp aisle. Your oldest son turned 28 yesterday. We're both babies. <laughs> My oldest son is going to be 17 in October. My headband's sliding back a little bit. He's going to be 17 in October. <laughs> Tammy says, I've got almost 10 years on y'all. <laughs> um, it came out in 2003. That feels like that was just two seconds ago. Now, granted, I was like freshman in college in 2003, but that doesn't feel like it was that long ago. And I'm like, are we really remaking movies that fast? It's only been 20 years and they're already remaking it. <laughs> I mean, Eddie Murphy's still alive. We don't need to remake it yet, do we? Uh, for those of y'all who are like, what are you talking about? We're talking about the, the Haunted Mansion movie. <laughs> Holly's only 18. Oh, you are a baby, Holly. But we welcome you. Glad you're here. <laughs> okay, we got our second coat up there. I really kind of thought we might need to do a second cut on this or on our orange pumpkin, but they look pretty good. Um, let me kind of tell you what my plan is. We're going to, when this dries, we're going to do our leopard print on this one. We're going to do enchanted shimmer here, which we could probably go ahead and do that next. And then we're going to do champagne gold polka dots up here with this same gold color. What did I plan on doing on this? I had a plan and now I've forgotten what it was. I think I was thinking about using a little bit of this puff paint and doing some like little squiggles or swirls or something like that. Maybe. I do see a spot that needs touching up on the orange one. So I'm going to touch that up real quick and then we'll start doing our enchanted shimmer on our turquoise pumpkin. Did y'all watch the tutorial? No, that's not the tutorial. I did that yesterday. Did y'all watch the interview I did with Dina Klingerman on Facebook today? Guys, it was so good. Y'all, I learned something new even. She was talking about um, these horse paintings that she did and how she made prints of them. So if you didn't know that it was possible to like make a photocopy, essentially, of your door hanger, and turn it into something else, you need to go watch the interview that I did at one o'clock today. It was so interesting. You start college on Monday. What's your major, Holly? Your oldest just left for college. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, somebody on TikTok said, I'm sorry, but could you please tell me again where the bandana came from? Oh, Wander and Arrow Co. Instagram. <laughs> pre-dental hygiene. Uh, my sister-in-law went to college for that and now she's not doing that anymore. She did it for a while, but now she is, um, cotton chaos. She sells, uh, t-shirts. She's got a t-shirt printing business, but that is, that is something really good to go to college for. Like you, you can make some good money doing that. It's just touching up some stuff. All right. Uh, I don't know why I was getting my hair dryer out, but, um, all right, do I want to do the blue? I think I want to try this iridescent shimmer. If this doesn't impress us, we may go with a plan, plan B. I don't know. This is called Enchanted Shimmer. And essentially, it's colorless, but it leaves like a holographic top coat. So I thought about using it on this one to give it a sheen or a shimmer, but if it's not impressive enough, we may have to go and do something else um, because it, I've only used it a few times, so I'm not quite sure what the effect is going to be. I know it shows up really well on top of dark colors like black or purple or blue or something like that. Okay, Debbie says it's great. All right, maybe it'll be good on this, on this color. I'm not sure, but this one is the blue one. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, I'm kind of impressed, y'all. Hang on. Let me get, ooh, it's kind of creating like a really pretty mermaid sort of look. Can y'all see that? Look. So it's kind of like a color flip, like an iridescent. It's not doing it justice on TikTok, sorry. 
Um, but let's cover the whole thing and then see what happens. So it's going to kind of give it a more of a blue color, which I didn't expect, but I've got a green one too. We can try if we want to have this pumpkin to have more of a green coat or a little bit of both, maybe. Gonna keep it on the turquoise pumpkin. Go around. It really did. I thought it was gonna take more than this too. I poured a whole lot over there in my little egg carton. And I'm not my egg carton, my ice cube tray, and it it's not taking a whole lot to cover. It's real smooth and satiny feeling. All right, long strokes to smooth everything out because it does feel, I do feel like it shows almost every brush stroke. So definitely long strokes to kind of smooth it out. And let's dry, let it dry and then see what we get. Um, hi, Jeannie, Jeannie from Oregon. It will dry clear. Okay, good. Is the puff paint made by DecoArt? No, puff. this puff paint is actually, who is this made by? It just says Puffy. Like, that's the brand. Manufactured by I Love to Create. It's it's available at Walmart in the craft aisle or Amazon if you're shopping on my Amazon favorites. So, we're going to do that on this pumpkin. Um, if we go ahead and dry this, I could do my polka dots up here also. Thank you, Jane. Can you tell me what brush you did for the lettering? Um, it's a filbert tip brush. What's the name of that shimmer you were using? Enchanted. I'm gonna have to make this one of my Friday Fab Five things. So if you want the link to this, I'll find it. And we'll talk about it on Friday Fab Five tomorrow morning at 9.30. Come join me here on Facebook. You have a recipe to make puff paint. You're gonna try it one day. Let us know how it goes, Laura. Oh, you like my brush? Thank you. Okay, that area is dry. To make these polka dots super easy, we're just gonna use a sponge pouncer. These are in our shop at shopdoorhangers.com. They come in like five different sizes and I think you get four of each size. So it's 20 sponge pouncers for like 15 or $20. And I'm gonna go the easy route here and just dip right in the paint. This paint's really sticky too. So do not dip it and then go pouncing right away. Kind of scrape a lot of that off so that it looks a little bit more like this. Like it looks like you don't have enough paint at all on there. And we're gonna do a dot, push down, give it a half a turn twist and lift up. And you might have to dip again or you might not. Sometimes I end up doing it just out of habit. Okay, and here's my trick. If you haven't heard it before, I feel like I've told it a million times. Here's my trick for spacing your polka dots in a way that you don't have like one weird, awkward polka dot. Because nobody likes an awkward polka dot. <laughs> um, so you see the two polka dots here, right? So our third polka dot is going to go right here. Why? Because you need to be able to draw an invisible triangle between your dots. So the next one goes here so that I can draw an invisible triangle between those dots. And just keep, don't jump over here and then do a random dot over here. Keep building on the last pair of dots that you did and just re rinse and repeat. And rule of thumb, always have some going off the edge of the door hanger. If your dots are only floating in the middle of the door hanger, you are doomed to have awkward dots. <laughs> I'm cracking myself up. Awkward dots. Okay, move over. There we go. Put one up here. Okay. I feel like we have an awkward dot situation. I need one right here. So what I'm going to do is get out a baby wipe. I Sometimes I'll use a sticky note, but because this is a curved pumpkin edge, the sticky note method won't work. So I'm going to get a, ba a baby wipe out. My baby wipes are a little dry. Spritzer bottle to the rescue. And we're going to do a dot right here on the edge of this pumpkin. And yes, I did get it on my turquoise pumpkin, but because we have our baby wipe handy, we can just wipe it off. Ta-da! 
Are y'all impressed yet? <laughs> Sometimes the easiest solutions are the simple ones. <laughs> awkward dots. Yes, there is such a thing as awkward dots. Okay. We're going to start building over here because we kind of finished the pattern over here. So over here, we got to keep building this way. There's one. There's one. There's one. These dots might need a second coat, but we're going to do our, our first one and we'll dry it and we'll see if they need another coat because I do kind of have that sort of like sponged texture to them. So if you look closely, see how they kind of have a spongy texture and I'm okay with spongy texture, but because this is a, like a glam door hanger, I want them to look like almost like perfect circles as perfect as I can get them with, with the sponge bouncer anyway. You like the triangle idea? It is definitely helpful. Like if you struggle with having awkward dot syndrome, um, <laughs> we don't want the awkward dot police to get you. Exactly. Stacy. Um, you know, doing the triangle pattern will definitely help. What am I using? These are little sponge pouncers available in our shop. You can also find these like on the craft aisle at Walmart, but the ones in our shop are available in like five different sizes and you get like four of each size. What? That's the quietest hair dryer ever. It's because it's not a hair dryer. It is a heated craft tool. It's linked in my Amazon favorites. It's made by Ranger, the company who makes like the alcohol inks and the stamping stuff. Oh, I did twist Elizabeth. I did twist little dauber. Um, I just probably didn't say it each time. And I wasn't like really twisting. I was only like a quarter turn twisting it. Plus this paint is really sticky. I feel like it does well even without like doing a good twist. All right. We're going to do one more layer of dots to make sure they're nice and covered even better. So we're literally just going right I sound like Charlie right now. Charlie says literally a lot. It must be a young, like Gen Z thing. Is Charlie Gen Z? Or is it the kids who are graduating right now that are Gen Z? Anyway, she says literally all the time. But we're just going to go right on top of the dots that we just did. And I'm just kind of putting it on there and giving it just like an eighth of an inch turn. Just enough to kind of smush that paint on there. Don't forget the ones on the edges. I do like the look of that better. It's kind of giving it just a little bit better coverage on the second pounce. Okay, I did that one, I think. Let's do this one. What brand diaper wipes do you use? Um, mine are just the Parents Choice Fragrance Free. I think I already did this one, but we'll do it again. Um, I've even bought them from Sam's Club, like the ones that come in the giant box. I usually buy those for Southern Adornments Live because we need lots of baby wipes for Southern Adornments Live. Okay, here's the one on the edge of the pumpkin. Daub it and clean it up. Perfect. I feel like we might need one down here in the corner. Is that weird? Just kind of smush it in there. All right, I'm going to drop that sponge into my water cup because you don't want your sponge drying out. You can reuse it. <laughs> Diana says your granddaughter says same all the time. Your six-year-old granddaughter says literally all the time. Yeah, they must be looking up to some of the older kids who are saying that a lot. Oh, thank you, Joanne. She said your pouncers were a lot cheaper than any place I'd looked before. Got them at Southern Adornments Live last year. I'll have to be sure and bring some this year also. Uh, Lisa, that paint that I was using was the Matte Metallics. It is an Americana paint, uh, flat metallic paint from DecoArt, and it's champagne color. So we painted our pumpkin champagne. We did champagne polka dots. Look how pretty this is. So pretty and subtle. Like, I really like that subtle matte gold. Okay, and then let's check now. Oh, and look how this has dried. It's actually not as shimmery as I thought. Like, it looks good. This blue, can y'all see that? It looks more blue overhead until you kind of twist it, and it flips from, like, blue to green looking at it. Um, what was I saying? Oh, we need to check our foil adhesive. So, remember how it was kind of milky looking? To check it this this is my method I don't know that this is like approved but this is how I do it so I like put my hand on it 
see how sticky it is? My hand sticks to it. You don't have to put your whole hand. But then take your hand and kind of do like this. If your hand feels clean and not sticky at all, when you pull it up, you're good. Okay? Because, like, there should be, just like when you touch a sticky note. The sticky note sticks to you, but when you pull it off, your hand's not sticky. That is sort of my tester way of making sure the glue is dry. Now, you might want to check and make sure you don't have, like, a thick spot where you didn't get the glue smoothed out good. Because those thick spots do take longer to dry. I'm kind of checking every corner of it. And so far, so good. We're coming away clean. So now, it's time for the fun part, the foil. How many of you guys are excited to see this foil? This is the leopard print foil from Artistic Painting Studio. It's got a gold background on it. And see how one side of it is just kind of shimmery and matte? That is the side you're going to stick, okay? Pretty side goes up. All right, so this foil is determined to, to like coil up on me. So I'm going to hold it like this. Get it placed over that pumpkin so I'm covering the whole thing and then just lay it down and smooth it out. Now, there's a couple different ways you can do that, the, this. The best method for getting this to stick is to take, I don't have one in here, but you know those little nail brush scrubbers that you like put in your shower to scrub your brush, scrub your brush, to scrub your nails? Those are great for this because you've used those to kind of like scrub the foil. And so depending on what kind of wood you're working on, you might need to do more scrubbing to ensure that you get a really good um, stick. Because if your wood that where you're working on has any kind of wood grain whatsoever, you want to like scrub it real good. This is not working out so well. I'm, I'm working my best here, trying my best with this little thing. Oh, hang on. I gotta see a brush across the room that might work well for this. But you need something that's going to get down in like all the little cracks and crevices and pores. This might work and it might work. This might, I don't know, I don't even know what this brush is, but look at this. Let's try, let's try this thing. Mm, I feel like it's too soft. You need something almost like abrasive to like scrub in those little cracks and crevices. What did I do with that one? Here we go. Would a brayer work? What's a brayer? <laughs> what is a brayer? Is that the roller thingy? Um, if this were a perfectly flat surface, a brayer might work. The thing is, is you need to make sure that it's getting down in the cracks of whatever it is you're putting this on. Like you want it to get good adhesion, which this MDF is almost perfectly smooth. So I have no doubt that this is going to look great when we take it up. Another thing that I like to do is take the um, wooden handle side of a paintbrush and do like this because look, when it starts to stick, see how you can see that it's like the, the clear transfer paper is lifting up? That's when you kind of know like, oh, I'm getting a good adhesion here. So if you kind of do that, you can actually see if you're missing spots. And this is not going to stick to anywhere that you didn't put down into foil adhesive. So I don't have to worry about it sticking to our blue pumpkin or anything like that. Because I didn't put any adhesive over there. Look, it's already starting to it's already starting to lift up in some spots. So I'm kind of just working from one side to the next here. Scrub, scrub, scrub. It's just a foil transfer, essentially. You all remember those foil transfers? You might have done them as a kid, especially if you were a 90s kid. They had, like, some that were, like, cute little critters or pictures. And some of them were, like, words. And you would transfer the words to, like, your scrapbook or whatever it was you were working on. Okay. I feel like I need a drum roll sound effect. Are y'all ready? <sighs> Sorry, TikTok. I can't hardly um, see the comments. If you're wanting the replay to this, it's going to be on YouTube and um, Facebook in a, like an overhead looking down motion. So if you missed the adhesive part, you can go back and watch it. All right, ready? What kind of wood do I use for my blanks? This is MDF. Ready? Here's the reveal. <laughs> the angels are singing. <laughs> So, look, we actually didn't get a perfect adhesion, like, along the edges. 
but because we have that gold paint in the background, I feel like it's super forgiving. Um, it still looks super like, I don't know, really good. Look at that. Can y'all see it? And we don't have any finishing touches on this yet. When I go back and add like my outlines and things like that, it will um, like give the pumpkin a little more shape. <laughs> Lori said, oh, wow. I know, right? I do have one little spot that's being cantankerous right here. It's trying to peel up, but um, I can kind of hide that by doing like a little, little bit of paint touch up right there. Okay. What do we want to do next? I feel like we probably need to go ahead and start doing, no, wait. I probably need to do my lettering. Reason being, because if I do anything with puff paint right here, my arm is going to be all in it when I do the lettering. So I probably need to jump up there and do my lettering first. So let's do that. Let me grab my filbert tip brush. We're just going to do it black like we did last night. Um, black goes with everything. And this is the filbert tip brush I was telling you all about. You can also do this with a paint pen if you prefer. Just notice that I like re-dip in my paint pretty frequently to get like a nice smooth brush stroke. Oh, I think I almost scraped across a dot that wasn't completely dry because they're kind of thick. So just be careful of your dots if your dots are still wet. Um, <laughs> Laura said, I don't think they had that when I was a kid. Do you have a true gold paint that you recommend? Um, I don't use gold very much, so I really kind of don't. Sorry. Somebody in the comments might, though. Some of our Painters Clubhouse sisters that paint with gold paint very often. Do y'all have, like, a gold paint that you just love? Share that with our friends in the comments. How many of you guys are still sitting on the fence? Like, oh, should I, shouldn't I join Painters Clubhouse? I'm thinking about it, but I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Let us help you. Let us answer your questions. What is holding you up? Anna raised her hand. Okay, Anna, what 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 is hanging you up? Is there like a something in your mind that's saying like I don't know if I want to pay the money? Like forty seven dollars a month is a lot of money. Is there something like that in your head, or is it more like I just don't know if I'd have the time for this, or is it more like I just don't think. Um, I don't think I'd be good enough at painting to be able to do this. There's lots of different reasons that hold people up from being able to um, pull the trigger and join, join the membership. Um, what all comes in the monthly subscription? Kristen, you get access to our member library that I gave a tour of on Facebook Live earlier today. And it has over 100 different painting tip templates and tutorials in it that you could um, pick out for any season of the year. It also has tons of technique videos. It has videos showing you how to use a jigsaw or a scroll saw, how to pick out paints at the craft store, um, how to choose a brush for whatever it is you're fixing to use um, a paintbrush for. Kind of just teaches you all the beginner basics and then it starts building from there to teach you all kinds of different um, techniques that you might want to learn. Then you also get access to our private Facebook group where the Painters Clubhouse hangs out. That's where I do my live tutorials. That's where we post pictures of our projects. So if you like to sit and sip coffee in the mornings, you can sit and scroll through the Clubhouse feed in the mornings, see what everybody's been up to. Or you can do it while you're sitting at the doctor's office or in the car rider line. Um, or if you're a busy person, you're like, I ain't got time to scroll. You can just join us on Fridays for our weekly powwows where I kind of give you guys a quick rundown of what you might have missed over the past week. I show off some highlight, uh, highlight posts that were made in the group and we celebrate people's wins and things that they've accomplished. Um, we have Zoom paint parties every month, at least once a month, where you can hop on and chat with some other Clubhouse members and get to know them. Um, we do door hanger challenges where we challenge you to try out a new technique or to combine two techniques, um, something like that. Um, if finances is the reason why you're, you know, struggling to, to decide whether or not to join, just know that you have full permission to sell whatever you learn to paint from us. Um, you have permission to, sorry, somebody on TikTok was saying, what are you writing? 
happy fall. Um, you have permission to teach these in a paint party if you want to have a paint party in your home. Those are different ways that can kind of like generate a little extra money for you and help offset the cost of learning to paint. Um, Debbie says, joining the Painters Clubhouse was the best decision I ever made. I love the community over competition. I appreciate you, Debbie. Elizabeth says, trust me, joining is the best decision I've made. This group is so helpful, encouraging, and uplifting. And so many more adjectives that I can't think of right now. I love this group. That's so funny. Thank you. Um, the brush that I use for lettering, Filbert. It's a Filbert tip. Um, do you turn the Filbert tip brush sideways to paint the letters, or do you use it regular? Um, so... When I'm doing like these broad strokes, like down the edge of that Y, I do turn it completely. Let me hold a, a big brush so you can see. I turn it flat like that to do like that Y shape. But then those little serifs on the ends of the letters, I actually put the brush kind of up on its tippy toes and just do like a little sideways dash. Now for like the curve of the A, I'm kind of on my tippy toes when I start at the top of that curve. And as I come down, I kind of flatten it out to make that broad stroke and then come back up on my tippy toes to finish it off. So you'll learn that kind of stuff with practice and just repetition of painting with a brush more and more. You'll kind of learn how to increase pressure, reduce pressure, kind of like how to curve those bristles and things like that. Um, <laughs> but he said, have you ever thought about a senior discount? Seniors have lots of time to paint. We have lots of seniors in our group, actually. And a lot of these ladies, um, like Miss Dina, I don't know that Dina considers herself a senior, but I know she's retired. Um, she started sort of a little side business um, after retirement that has helped her, you know, make a little extra money on the side. It's keeping her busy, giving her something to do in her days where she's not working. Um, okay, Amber said, guys, let me just say that if any of you have health issues or you're disabled in some way, this group has made me feel that I have purpose again, and I feel a sense of community that I learned from this group. Oh, Amber, that touched my heart. Thank you so much for sharing that. She said, the money is totally worth it. I get way more out of this than the 40 something dollars that I spend. Um, I don't know what else she spends $40 on, but like, yeah, you're going to get way more out of this than you will going out to a really fancy steak dinner for $40. Like this is going to fill your cup in ways that going to a steak dinner cannot do <laughs> or going, uh, it's like, it's way cheaper than even going to therapy, let's say. Um, what did I do to distress one last night? Um, you'll have to go back and watch that tutorial, le tori <laughs> tutorial, Lisa, that's a mouthful. Um, but we did a little bit of dry brushing and an an antiquing glaze. Gina said, I just got brave. Everybody give Gina a round of applause. And she said, I quit using paint pens and started using a tiny silver tip and I actually turned it on its side. I'm glad you're enjoying using the brush. It is a, it is a step in your painting process that makes you feel more confident. Uh, Johnny says, or Joni, I'm not sure how to say your name. She said, I'm a senior and I love the Painters Clubhouse Club. I'm a new painter, so this is actually keeping me busy and I have a goal to sell them soon. Great. Uh, Alette, we have filbert tip. We have a whole like pack of filbert tip brushes in our shop from like the tiniest all the way up to a pretty good size one. So if you want to get a whole pack of those, they're, you know, depending on what size lettering you're doing, there's a lot of them in there. So go grab a pack of filbert tips at shopdoorhangers.com. Uh, let's see. Somebody said, I missed the foil. Did you lay it down and heat it up? No, we applied a foil adhesive, let it get to a nice dry tack. And once it was dry and tacky that we could touch it, but it wasn't coming off on our hands, we applied the foil adhesive. Oh, if you missed what the $40 was for, we were talking about our Painters Clubhouse membership. It's open to new members. It's $47 a month if you want to learn how to paint a private Facebook group with me. We're doing Halloween projects in September. Plus, you get access to our entire member library. So if you are like anti-Halloween, do not celebrate Halloween, do not care to paint for Halloween, instead of painting Halloween with us next month, just log into the member area and pick one of the fall door hangers or paint one of these. I mean, we have tons of fall door hangers to choose from in there. All right. Um, next, I think we need to do our puff paint. I was trying to think through all the things we got to do. We got to do puff paint. We've got to do finishing touches like outlines and things. Um, I want to do some glitter over here and outlines and stuff. So this is 3D puff paint from the Walmart. Um, and we're just going to 
I don't know. I'm trying to decide. I'm like, do I want to do like swirls, kind of like a little swirly design on this pumpkin? What do y'all think? Oh, thank y'all for the sweet little testimonials over in the comments. Lisa said, best decision ever to join this group of supportive people are the greatest investment. They're all so willing to help with any questions you have and cheer for you constantly. Regina said, I did the Lola painting and was hooked. I was my dad's, care I was my dad's caregiver. He had Alzheimer's. And I would paint in front of him, and he liked to watch and helped me with the stress. I stopped three months when he passed away. I just started back painting with Henrietta. I'm so glad you're back to it, Regina, and I love your story. I would love to interview you sometime, if you don't mind. Um, email us at info at Southern Adornment Decor. I would love to set up like a Facebook Live interview and tell your story, because that sounds fascinating. Um, and I'm getting this all over my <laughs> I didn't realize it's like seeping out of the bottle, and I'm like, got it all over my hands now. Okay. Um, yeah, the link is in my bio. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I think everybody said swirls look good. Lisa said put a face on it. I feel like I can't turn this into a jack-o'-lantern because this is going to be a glam door hanger. So we might just do some fun little swirly whirlies. Okay. All right. And I'm totally free handing these. Um, you just kind of have to go with it when you're using a rider bottle. So if you need to, you can practice on some cardboard first. But I'm just going to kind of like go over these more than once maybe and kind of thicken them up because that did come out super thin. So when I do a swirl, this is kind of my method. I'll go one way, swirl from big to little, and then I'll go the other way, swirl big to little. And then I'll come out of the middle here. Whoops, it didn't even squeeze anything out. Now it's all stopped up. Hold up. Come on now. Get your act together. All the glitter has caused a traffic jam. At the end of this little thing. Hold on. I got like a little needle thingy over here. Let's try poking it. You can't all come out at once. Okay, let's try again. Hold please. We're having technical difficulties. Squeeze the life out of it. Only thing coming out is glue. The glitter is all backed up. Sometimes you just got to troubleshoot. I've got this little thing. It's got a needle in it. I'm poking it down in there. Maybe that'll help. Uh, somebody said, as a member, are members allowed to sell the designs as kits as well for parties and online? Um, I prefer that you don't sell the wood blanks online unless you're selling them in a kit form with like your own tutorial or something like that. But if you're wanting to just supply the wood blanks, um, we prefer that you just like sh join our affiliate program and send them to our site. If you're just selling a blank, does that make sense? Stick a toothpick in it. Uh, it's working now, but then I do another one kind of going out that way. All right, let's do kind of one going this way. And I kind of just focus on filling the dead space. So if there's an awkward space right here, I'll fill it. Let's do one up here coming over to fill that dead space. Whoops, I didn't really. I kind of pushed down too hard and not enough paint came out. Okay, that one's a lot thicker than this one. So I'm going to go over this one one more time. Make it a little thicker. Ah, okay. That happens to you. Keep your baby wipe handy. I had a goop. I had a goopy spot that just kind of just floop, came right out. It does kind of take a bit of a patient or steady hand to go back over an area that you've already done. But whoop, I'm just going to smush that in there and smooth that out. <laughs> I really think once this dries, it'll look a lot better. Um, but if you're able to move quickly, it looks, I think it looks better than if you're sitting here trying to do what I'm doing and like get it to perfectly go back on the line you were doing. So I'm not writer bottle proficient by any means. I only know <laughs> a little bit. 
So for those of you who use Ryder bottles more frequently than me, feel free to share your tips in the comments. I can use all the help that I can get. Hey. Hey. Okay, there's a little swirly whirly. I feel like we need something else kind of coming down here. Hi, dear. This We're is my here. son. <laughs> Love you too. Smush and smooth often. Okay. You're liking the swirls? How do you sign up for the membership? Amanda, go to paintersclubhouse.com. There's also a link up in the video description for you. Um, but you can sign up over there. And you can join monthly or yearly, and you can cancel at any time. Let me wipe the tip off here. Wendy says, I love to craft, but I never have time. I want to join, but I can't afford just yet. I'm hoping to be able to by the first of next year. We would love to have you, Wendy. Fall is the best time to join, though. I really love fall crafts. And Christmas is coming up and all that. All right, should I do another one kind of coming down here, or should I just leave them at the top of the pumpkin? What do you think? What color? This is just gold glitter. Just gold glitter. So when it dries, it'll look like gold glitter on there. We could also just kind of do like, that would be cute. We could just do some little dots kind of randomly. I'm really good at the dots. <laughs> you know why? Because when I was a kid, my mom used to let me help her do the dots on the cute little applique sweatshirts she, she used to paint back in the 90s. And so it was my job to sit and squeeze the little dots on the middles of the poinsettias or whatever it was we were painting. I'm just going to do some like three little random dots in places around the edges of these to kind of add some little decorative flair. Okay, lots of people are saying just the top. I kind of agree. I kind of think that it kind of looks like a, a golden vine up here at the top. So I'm just going to add these little dots here and there for extra cuteness and then be done. So some of them are kind of going along the outside of the little swirls and some are on the inside. I feel like I need some right here. Okay, that's good. We'll stop there. Where's my lid? Yeah, kind of like Cinderella's pumpkin. Okay, it looks like a mess right now, but when this dries, it'll look pretty. Trust me. <laughs> Famous last words. Okay. Um, for this one, we did that enchanted shimmer and I'm, I'm okay with, I think it looks pretty good, but it wasn't quite what I had in mind. Um, so I think we're going to jazz it up with some of these stickles. Y'all use stickles before they're like glitter glue, but they're in this cute little pot instead of in a squeeze bottle. So, and they're kind of like a paste. I thought I might just do this with my finger. Does your mom do her door hangers? No, my mom doesn't do her door hangers. My mom um, used to do like t-shirts and stuff when we were kids and she kind of dabbled in all kinds of crafts. Look how fun this is. Look, 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 look. I want to smear this on my face. <laughs> like those people on TikTok who like do the face paint. Ooh, <coughs> you're going to be wanting to run out and buy some stickles after this. Um, but no, my mom's not that crafty anymore. She's, she, I think she kind of grew out of it or whatever. I think it was just something she did when I was a kid. She's very supportive of my crafting. All right. I'm just going to smear this kind of from the top. So it'll be a little heavier up at the top. And then it'll kind of just trail off at the bottom. But some of these stickles are really chunky. And some are really fine. This is so cute. We'll let it kind of trail off going down. Finger painting is fun. What do y'all think? <laughs> this is so fun. Definitely got that Cinderella pumpkin by Bob going on. We'll kind of do a little bit more around the edge down here at the bottom too. Let it kind of trail off. So I'm just going to rub some like excess tiny glitter kind of into the bottom area, but then I want the top to be super chunky. So I may even kind of do this little tap, tap, tap motion because scraping it sometimes doesn't get the big chunks off of your finger. So right up here at the very top, I'm going to kind of tap it in so that I've got more. Can y'all tell I'm making this up as I go? Cause I totally am. <laughs> and then we'll stop because we got to find a quitting spot or we'll, I don't know. Hang on. I said we would stop, but I feel like I need a little bit more kind of, kind of.
it coming down right there. <laughs> Where do I get the stickles from? Um, I think they sell them at Hobby Lobby. I actually got these at the NAMTA Creativation Craft Conference. This is what they look like. They're made by Ranger. It's a glitter gel. Glitter gel. And this color is called Galaxy. Okay. Let me show y'all kind of up close what this, this glitter looks like. Can y'all see the chunky gorgeousness of it? It's so pretty. Okay, TikTok, your turn. Coming in hot with the glitter. Look, look, look. Look how fun. It definitely brought the glam factor up a notch, didn't it though? It just, psh, like I wish I had stickles in all the colors. I have some other colors. Let me show you what else I got. I have a pink one, a purple one, and a yellow, but none of these really went with the rest of our project. But these are the other ones that I have that we could use on a future project. So the yellow, whoops, sorry, I forgot to hold it for TikTok. Yellow. Uh, this one's called Venus. It's kind of like a soft pink color. So if you did a pink pumpkin, that'd be real pretty. And this purple is really pretty. It's called Pegasus but I wish I had an orange now because the orange would have been really cool on this one. Um, you like it better in the jar than the bottle? Yeah, it's a totally different, a totally different method. I feel like it makes the stems of our pumpkins look boring now, <laughs> but that's okay. So because everything else is matte and this is glittery, I feel like when you get completely done with your door hanger and it's cured, you could use like a real nice spray sealer and make the entire thing kind of shine. And that would make this gold not look, I mean, this um, orange and stuff not look flat. You know, it would still be shiny, but it wouldn't be glittery. Got me? Okay. <laughs> Liz, Lisa said, looks like another trip to Hobby Lobby. Oh, shucks. So remind me and I'll put the stickers on the Friday Fab Five item tomorrow. Stickers, stick holes for tomorrow. You just found them on Amazon five jar kit for $17.86. Okay, I'll go check that out, Bobby. And if I can't find a better deal, that may be on our um, Instagram. Okay, or not our Instagram. Friday Fab Five. Somebody on TikTok is asking questions. Sorry, I have to hold my hand up kind of awkward. Like, I can't read your comment if I don't do that. Do you have lipstick on or something? Or is your lip natural? No, not my nat natural lip color. Uh, it is Maybelline. And it's that, like, lip crayon. And it's called Run the World. Like, I'm going to run the world, run the world. That is, it's, it's a really natural color. So it's not like in your face and it's matte. So it doesn't like come off easily. It did come off a little bit just then, but <laughs> it doesn't normally come off easily. Okay. We've got to finish this up. So I've got to quit yabbing and, and get done. All right. I'm going to use a paintbrush and a tiny bit of black paint. Dampen my brush a little bit. This is a round tip brush, nice and pointy. I watered my paint down just a little bit because I think it flows a little better. Plus, it's been sitting here in these lights drying a little. Swirl that in. And we're just going to do some finishing touches on our pumpkin. So this is where we can kind of use that black paint to kind of clean up any little imperfections. Add some, like, lines and things to our project to kind of give it a little bit more shape. Last night when I was doing this part of it, Charlie came in here and she's like, Ooh, can I do that part? And I did not have the heart to tell her no. And she actually did a really good job. I was a little nervous that she was going to um, <laughs> make it look a little rough because, you know, she's eight. But she actually did a really good job. Oh, thank you. So I'm just going to kind of freehand like a quick little swirl at the top of our pumpkins like that and then a little line down and then um, the tricky part is all of this is still wet so I really can't do um, I can't do it on top of that and I want to be real careful with not getting it too heavy-handed down here on our orange pumpkin because we don't want to like distract from all the gold so I'm just going to kind of lightly just do like little hints of it with a real light hand um, oh, and then on our sign, there we 
we go. I feel like it got quiet in here all of a sudden. Even my kids got quiet. <laughs> Charlie is a breath of fresh air. Thank you, Amber. I told her tomorrow night if she doesn't have like a friend over, because she likes to have friends over on Friday nights. I told her if she doesn't have a friend over or anything, she might could come join me on Facebook Live for our little paint party we're doing tomorrow night at 7 um, with the other three clubhouse members. And so she might be sitting with me tomorrow night if she doesn't have a sleepover or something going on. You think our little pumpkin needs some sparkle? If I had some gold chunky glitter, I totally would. Um, I wish I had some stickles. I have some brush on, but I don't have any like chunky glitter. The acrylic paint holder, Diana, is for sale on our website, shopdoorhangers.com. Go over there and use the search bar and type in storage cube. Oh, thank you, Marie. Hey, Becca, you got your blanks today. Okay, good. I saw somebody ask how, like, how do you get this wood shape? There's a couple different ways. You can either cut your own wood shape using our wood, our template that we provided. It's free in the video description. You could also um, purchase this wood blank from us. It's eight, uh, an 18 inch and it's $24. You can get it at shopdoorhangers.com. Um, but we would love to have you join our membership, the Painters Clubhouse. You get 20% off of all of your purchases at Shop Door Hangers. And you have a tutorial for every um, template that we provide, plus access to the amazing community we've all been talking about. I can't say enough good things about them. Chris says, how about a few gold glitter dots on the small one? We thought I could do that, yeah. Am I going to do any kind of outline on the teal pumpkin? Yeah, I'm kind of waiting for that to dry. That's why I was holding this on there. Because I don't want to run my brush through that sticky stickle gel. I'm kind of letting it dry. Your favorite one was the second one? Okay, when I get done, we're going to take a vote. And we're going to say which one was your favorite. The whimsical, the rustic, or the glam. So we're nearly done. Laura says she thinks this is her favorite. That's the fun part about this. Is there something for everybody? I feel like, you know, if you like glam stuff, this is going to be your favorite. If you like um, rustic decor, that other one's going to be your favorite. And some of you guys are going to like the whimsical one more than any of them. So it really just depends on your own personal style. There we go. Added our lines to our blue one. Look how cute that is. So cute. All right, somebody requested some gold on our leopard one. So we'll see. Let's just do some little jazzy highlights. How about that? Get it flowing here. I'm doing kind of a little ziggy zag up here at the top. Do it around the edges. Like that. And we might, let's do some on our... Our, I feel like our little stems look kind of boring compared to everything else. So let's do some gold on those. This is kind of like this part of it. I feel like if you are scared of using a rider bottle, this part's really easy because you've just got to be able to like scribble. So like we could even do some around the edges of our sign on top of our black outlines like this. And you can just squeeze and kind of just run it along there. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It just kind of has to be cutesy. Y'all want to do some on the lettering too? I'm just going to do a little bit on the lettering, like a little outline kind of. I love how, like, you guys start to get, whoops, I got way off with that one. Ah, no. I think those were dry enough. It didn't mess it up. Did you see what happened? It rolled right across my little um, thingies. Um, each knot, it kind of just starts to evolve a little bit and each one gets cuter and cuter. And I feel like you guys do a really good job of inspiring me to think outside the box and do something different on these because we're just playing and creating. It's fun. If you mess up with this little rider bottle, just keep your baby wipe handy. You can always kind of wipe it up and go again. I did mess up on that letter P, but I don't know where my baby wife went. I think I threw it in the trash, so we're just going to leave it be. <laughs> okay. Uh, questions. What do you seal your door hangers with? Um, spray, any kind of clear acrylic spray. Can you show the rustic in the other one too? Yeah. So for those on TikTok, 
because they can't see behind me like you guys can. I'm going to hold it up like this. So this is the whimsical one. This was night number one. The replay is on YouTube for this one. And we did polka dots. We did a diamond pattern and we used a wood grain tool. If you've never used a wood grain tool, it creates like a fake wood grain look because this is MDF. It doesn't have wood grain. So that was night number one. We're going to take a vote. Okay. So be deciding who your favorite is. Number two, this is rustic. We um, pretty much just base coated with solids on our door hangers. We did a cow print design on this one. It's not my best effort at cow print, I will admit, but with everything else, I feel like it just goes. We also did a faux shiplap look up here. You can kind of see the lines going horizontally across. And then once we had all of the design on there, we took some glazing medium and some brown paint, mixed it together. We covered the entire thing and wiped it off with paper towels. And it created, whoops, it created this really cool depth of color and kind of this like rustic patina look on everything. And so you can kind of see that like it doesn't look like a flat teal or a flat orange. It kind of gave it more of a rustic look. And then, put that back up there. And Charlie outlined that pumpkin. <laughs> and then tonight, our glam night, I've got to be careful where I grab this because it's got wet glitter all over it. So I'm trying to be careful. We've got glitter up here on our letters. We've got glitter on our pumpkin. We've got glitter swirls on that pumpkin. We've got a little bit of glitter accents on our leopard foil. And so um, it's going to look even better tomorrow when I take it outside and give it a really pretty clear coat spray because all the areas that are matte right now will be shiny no matter which direction you're looking at it. So not only will the gold sparkle and shine, but everything else will be kind of shiny looking. So I think it'll take the glam up a notch. Okay, everybody cast your votes now. Are we saying whimsical, rustic, or glam? What was your favorite of all three? Missy says, when you use the foil, do you seal it? Yes, you can seal it. I don't know that one is better than the other. Lisa's favorite is the bling. You love it. You're a glitter and gold girl for sure. Kathy said, I've already painted the first two. I'm going to work on this one tomorrow. I can't wait to see how it turns out, Kathy. I saw your others in the clubhouse. Rita says, glam, glam, glam. Brenda says, rustic is my favorite. On TikTok, I'm seeing rustic, glam, rustic, whimsical. Um, Heather says rustic. Becky says glam. Lots of folks voting rustic and glam. So whimsical has a few votes, but it's definitely not the overall favorite. Um I think you could probably like mesh a couple of those styles together. So if there's a component you like about the whimsical one, like the diamonds painted on the um, pumpkin, you could incorporate that into either the glam or the rustic style um, by just painting that before you do your glitter, right? If you like the cow print look, instead of doing the foil on our glam pumpkin here, you could do cow print right here and still make it like glam cow print. So if there's an element of one of the other ones that you like, maybe you could mash up the styles a little bit, right? So you wouldn't have to only go glam or only go rustic. You could combine the styles or combine elements from these styles to make your own. How do you attach the back string? Great question, Sabrina. Um, you tie a knot in a piece of jute string on each end and staple right above that knot. LaDonna says, I might do a combination of all three. I cannot wait. Lynn, the company that makes the stickles, I said it out loud, but, uh, oh, it was Ranger. Ranger makes the, is the company. Um, Y'all come join me tomorrow for Friday Fab 5 at 9.30 a.m. And we will share the links to all of the little goodies that we use, like the foil, the stickles, the glazing medium, all that. I will drop all the links for all of that tomorrow at, on, during Friday Fab 5. Lauren says rustic is her favorite, but I decorate fall more rustic. Next is glam, which is not like me, but I'm loving the blue sparkle again or my norm. Yeah, I really like that blue sparkle too. It's really, really pretty. That would look really pretty on a Christmas door hanger too. Like the stickles on a Christmas door hanger would be gorgeous. How much is the monthly club? So the monthly club is $47 a month. That gets you access to the member library where you can download all the templates, watch all the tutorials. Plus we add new ones every month um, and access to the Facebook group. And so let's talk about why you might need this monthly club. Cause we've talked a dozen times about what is in it, but I don't know that we've talked about why you might need it. Some of you guys might need it because you need something that 
pulls your focus away from whatever's stressing you out in your day to day. You need some kind of craft that you can like pour yourself into and help fill your cup back up. This is a form of self care, guys. Painting is totally self care. Um, you might need this because you need a distraction from something difficult you're dealing with. Like earlier, we had um, was it Rita that mentioned that. Um, or Renita, I can't remember her name. Uh, she said she was dealing with her father who had Alzheimer's and she would sit and paint while she took care of him. And it helped them too to connect with one another because he would love to watch her paint. And so you guys might need something like that in your life. Or maybe you have a stressful job that at the end of the day of you need something fun to come home and do. Or you might want to use this as a way to connect with your kids or your grandkids to paint with them. Or you might be a crafter already who paints on their own already, but you're just missing the community aspect of it. And our community is better than any other that you'll find on Facebook. There's never any drama. There's always positivity, uplifting comments, and you're going to find people on there that are just like you are, that are going through the same things you are that you can relate to. You're going to be in, enjoy our Zoom paint parties where you can communicate with those people. You can talk about your upcoming craft fair and get excited with them. Because sometimes in our lives, we craft alone and we don't have people in our lives that get excited about our crafts like we do. And we need somebody who can relate, somebody who can get excited about that stuff with us. And so we just might be the community for you. And some of you guys are already crafty. And maybe you're just looking for your next project and you're like always scrolling Pinterest but, and pinning things, but never actually doing a project. Does that sound about like any of you guys? If that's you, then a project, a, gr a group like this is going to kind of like give you a little bit of accountability to doing a craft each month and to like picking something and actually following through with it. Because the feeling that you get when you post a picture in the clubhouse and the excitement and comments you get back from people is um, it fuels your desire to do another project because you're like, oh, I can't wait to do that one because they're going to love it. I can't wait to post the picture in the clubhouse. They're going to geek out about this like I do. And so having that community that can fill you up, can inspire you, can cheer you on when you do something awesome is um, is all so valuable. Oh, you're welcome, you guys. <laughs> Okay, I missed a comment. Let's see. Are the polka dots? Yeah, the polka dots are metallic. Um, you're welcome. You found me at the right time. I lost my job and was so stressed, said Shauna. Learning to paint helped me so much. I'm so glad to hear that. Um, Lisa said, did I hear you say at one point that you can now join at any time? Yes, yes. Um, but we do have a bonus going right now, which I forgot to mention earlier. If you join by tomorrow night, you get a bonus template. This fall design, and I'm sorry, TikTok, we can't show you because it's on the screen over here. But it's the word fall. So fall F is at the top. The A is a pumpkin and underneath are the letters LL. So it's kind of a square shape, but it spells out fall. And um, there's four different ways you can paint that door hanger. The one that's in the photo here is one of the four ways. And this was the one where we taught shading. We did a little bit of uh, rustic technique. And then we did a peekaboo technique with that same leopard foil that we used on this project. So if you want to get that free template and all four videos, join by tomorrow night. Oh my goodness, Miss Pam, I just saw your comment. She is one of our Painters Clubhouse sisters. She said, my mom just had her third stroke this week. My PC sisters have been so encouraging. And when I can't paint, I always watch someone in the group and relax. Miss Pam, I know your mother has had a tough time of it the last few months. And I'm so glad she has you to help take care of her. But oh my goodness, I need to, I'm going to say a prayer for her tonight. Um, I can't imagine three strokes this week. Is she able to be at home? Is she coming? Is she living with you or is she still living at home at her house? Let us know how we can support you. Um, Lynn says you need a community for your mental health. I couldn't agree more. Uh, Rita says 11 year old granddaughter is going to do one. I'll let her choose which one she wants. Debbie said nothing made me more confident in what I was doing than the painters clubhouse membership. I learned so many techniques. That's awesome. Uh, LaDonna says, this is my per first painting thing. LOL. I do all kinds of crafty things, including cricket crafting, scrapbooking. LaDonna, I did scrapbooking. I did cricket stuff. I did card making, jewelry making, sewing, you name it. I did all the crafting until I discovered door hangers and I put all the other crafts aside and now door hangers is all I do. I turned it into a business. Uh, door hangers are the best. 
I feel like there's so many things like, like tonight, there are so many things you can incorporate into door hanger painting that keep it from ever getting boring. Like we added the foils. We did the stickles. I've never put stickles on our door hanger until tonight. I will be doing that again. It was so fun. Uh, Chris says, I just happened upon this group. It's been a real joy to paint with you. I've always been crafty, but got away from it because of life. I'm in a new season of life and needed to get a real reboot into a new craft. I love Henrietta. Chris, I'm so glad you found us. It sounds like it was at just the right time. Hey, Janet. Glad you found us too. Diana says, how many different door hanger choices per month? So, Diana, um, we have over 100 for you to choose from in the membership already, but then we add at least two every month. Most months we take an old design and add and remix it. That's what we call it when we make it new again and paint it different. And so some months we'll actually have three tutorials. This month, instead of a remix, we're actually bringing in a guest instructor, Miss Tracy, and she's going to teach us how to do a napkin design on this little pumpkin that's in the middle here. And then the two on the outside there are the door hangers that we're going to be painting this month. Uh, okay, Miss Pam said, update on her mother. She went home to her home today. She watched you all day and loved it. She's doing good. Well, tell her I said hello. If you're watching Miss Pam's mom, I don't even know what your mom's name is. She or just Miss Pam's mom. Um, we love you and we're thinking about you. We'll say a prayer for you tonight. All right, you guys, I have got to go and see about my family because it's going to be bedtime for Charlie here pretty soon. But I thank you guys for hanging out with me tonight. Come see me tomorrow night, 7 p.m., same time, same place. I'll be here possibly with Charlie painting right beside me. So it's it's bound to be a hoot. Um, and I'm going to be painting. Oh, Miss Peggy. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and we're going to be painting with some members of the clubhouse here on Facebook Live. So bring all your questions. If you have questions about paint parties, craft fairs, uh, painting techniques, anything, come join us and ask tomorrow night. All right, y'all. Have a good night.